All right, another video for accountants and bookkeepers. I did an inter actually just a consultation call. She is starting Prism Bookkeeping Services, P-R-I-S-M Bookkeeping Services, and she had lots of great questions. So I actually recorded it, and then towards the end, I thought that it was really helpful. So I think this will be good. Um, lots of great questions if you're a startup bookkeeper. So hopefully this is something that, that, that you enjoy. So here we go. Like how to do things. And so, yeah, I just kind of wanted to pick your brain a little bit. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 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 So you're about to launch. What have you been doing up to this point? What, like, what, uh, what's your profession? Who am I? How the heck did I get here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's a good start. Yeah. So I haven't had a traditional like career path, so to speak, like sort of a cohesive trajectory that I've been following. I've tried different things, love doing different things. You know, I did like addiction, mental health counseling, and then, you know, more like administrative stuff with in different ways. So then I became a mom and I was like, yeah, I gotta like, like, you know, your priorities shift for sure. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And cause I know you have kids, right? I've got four of them. Yeah. 12, 10, four. seven, five. Yeah. So we're, we're totally, yeah. Our life has been adjusted by the children. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's like, okay. So anyways, yeah. I was like, you know what? I already knew that I like, I already knew that I would enjoy working for myself, obviously. And it's so funny because I had put myself in this box of like, I'm not a numbers person. I'm not good at math. I'm more of the arts or the people kind of person. You know, you kind of have this identity that you go through life with. And then I realized, you know, I actually really find numbers and organization satisfying <laughs> and I'm quite good at it and stuff like that. So anyways, that's it was kind of weird how it all happened. I was really looking into a lot of things on how to, how I could use my skills, you know, while also prioritizing my family yeah. and so entered bookkeeping. <laughs> and yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So where are you at with the training right now? Like, are you to the point, so you're getting ready to launch, but are you kind of to the point where you feel confident and QuickBooks or zero or whatever it is? And you, you like, you feel yeah. like, you're swing? okay. So I, I would say, so I've, I've done, I, this is, this is an interesting thing to, to talk about. Cause you know, I think it could, I think it's something that a lot of us go through that start bookkeeping businesses. Um, you know, I don't have an accounting degree and the only training I've received has been my in-depth independent study, as well as a program called bookkeeper launch. I'm not sure if you're familiar yeah. with. That. Yeah. I've heard great things too. Just so you know. Yeah. And rightfully so it was super comprehensive and anything that comes my way, I know, it, I know I'll be able to, you know, handle it and figure yeah. it out. But yeah, definitely <laughs> I'm in the part now where I'm like, okay, I know every day there will be new things that I'm going to be learning. And that's, that's, that's exciting to me. That's fine. And mm -hmm. now I'm more in a practical phase of like, I've got the, I've got the book smarts down and now I'm just, you know, things like putting together the website, which I know you specialize in website design. So that's really cool. So website, the whole onboarding process flow and getting like my, my contracts and all that together and then tying up some loose ends for how to like actually be able to function. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah, that's where I'm at. And I just, I wanted to ask you, ask you about the onboarding pro ask you about, you know, what your flow looks like when you first meet somebody and how you go about that. Cause there's so many voices out there and I'm trying to figure out, yeah, just love to cool. hear the different ideas. Cool. 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 So when you say onboarding, you mean like in the prospecting stage, like when before somebody's a client or primarily once they get started or what do you mean? More so what does the flow look like to bring them to assess what they need? So you've already kind of, you've already figured out that they would like to pursue mm -hmm. finding out, you know, working with you. So, most specifically, I would love to hear your opinion on how you assess someone's situation. You know, it goes by the term diagnostic review or whatever, quick review. So like yeah. looking at where they're at now and then, because there's so many different opinions on that, like paid diagnostic review or free consultation review, look under the hood. You know, I just trying to figure out what, learn from, learn from the greats, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure, for sure. Well, I'll, if I'm great, you know, it's kind of funny that I'll share some slides here and just kind of walk you through. I always like to be really open handed with this. And that way it's helpful for you. It, it hones my skills and it's probably a little bit of what we have inside of our course and whatnot. But, you know, it's kind of interesting when you think about like, what are the core problems that somebody has when they come to you, right? It's if you, it's always helpful to take a step back and really just think about what 
is the screwing around that this business owner has to do. We all kind of hear this idea that you you wear lots of hats when you're a business owner, right? Mm -hmm. um, you hear that a lot, but people don't really understand just how complex and how deep that truly is. Yeah. So that, you know, on, and I always share, there's a world of VAs, virtual assistants that just come into business owners' lives and just do stuff for them, let alone doing accurate bookkeeping, accounting, guiding them to make good tax decisions, helping them know their numbers and genuinely manage cash flow and make plans and and have reports and dashboards or whatever it is that you want to do, right? So there's mm -hmm. so what you always have to do is when you come at this, just remember that you get to come into their life and genuinely just help them get organized. And at at minimum, you're an alternative to having, you know, Jimmy, Joey, or Freddie doing the bookkeeping, which might not be done very well, let alone like for us, I've got a little team of nine of us. And if my wife or I are in my books, we are not doing the activities that grow our business. I need to be doing these. I need to be creating content. Exactly. And if I'm wasting time or my wife is wasting time doing that, or if we have somebody doing the bookkeeping, that's not really good at it. A lot of people will hire then what happens is you're going to spend the time that the CPA should be doing tax planning or, or providing more strategic CFO style guidance. You're going to waste that time cleaning up yeah. the books is what happens, okay. right? So yeah. on one side of the spectrum, you always got to remember that any of these business owners, like they're usually just disorganized, right? And on the other end, you have like, okay, let's imagine they're working with a big four firm and and we've handled all their accounting and bookkeeping and they've spent tens of thousands of dollars with us. Like, there's so much value on this spectrum that you can, like there's a slider. And I always recommend that just make sure that you're confident that just you coming into their life and helping them get around this and take it off their plate is valuable. Um, the second thing that I always recommend is that people understand, in fact, I'm making more and more videos about this because these are the things that are most important to a business owner. So all of your questions, all of your processing, everything you do should be pointing and peeking on this, right? You mm -hmm. want to be asking great questions throughout your analysis and throughout your process to understand what parts of this do they connect with the most? Because these are just things that I've identified that I know that are important to me, that as I sold at Nuance Financial and building yeah. that firm, what was valuable there. And then also I sell to the same people you do. Your clients are basically my clients, right? So I know that these are in here because I have deep relationships with hundreds of business owners. So number one, they all want to save in taxes. Mm -hmm. You even as a bookkeeper can simply recommend the basics. Just are you maximizing an S corp? Are you using retirement plans? Should you hire your kids? Should you start? Should you just be smart with benefits, right? The whole yeah. idea is to be proactive. And then they need guidance. Always have it in the back of your head that you don't want them to become 65 years old. They never invested in a retirement plan. They never got to tap into compounding interest. You need to make sure that at minimum, you tell them to call Schwab or Vanguard and get a small business retirement plan or at least an S&P 500 index fund or a retirement date fund. Use compounding interest. These are huge. They might mm. not know it, but that's like a, you're protecting their best interests. And I, I just covered this because this goes into so many things. The next thing that they value is compliance, right? Right. They want peace of mind that they're not behind. They want peace of mind that it's done right. They yeah. do want accurate numbers. They don't want nonsense. They want to avoid mistakes. Redoing and undoing things in business, losing talent, losing team members, redoing anything has a double cost to a small business owner. You have risk mitigation, just knowing that if they do get audited, things are there's at least a methodology to what's gone in. You know, and even if you're like, okay, I don't have a ton of practical application of how this works, but they do want accurate reports and they want to be protected from the IRS. This is huge, just that it's done right. And then the last thing, this is where as you get better at this, you know, if you were to fast forward 10 years and you're a decade into this, and let's just say you sold the 30 or 40 business owners a year, you're going to come out of it understanding that what business owners genuinely value is the saving of time, energy, and labor the efficient mm. productivity that you add into the organization. Um, like I always tell people when I sold at Nuance Financial, there's a patty part-timer that would show up in the most baby boomer Gen X led businesses. And it's usually a part-time mom or it's a gal who is administratively strong. She comes in there to do the AP, the billing, the invoices that, you know, accounts payable, accounts receivable. And yeah. then she does bookkeeping. And if we were honest with it, like there are certain levels of businesses that should have her doing the bookkeeping. And then mm -hmm. there's these nice little sweet little businesses where honestly, 
Like she'd be better if she just focused on AP and AR and you can be the bookkeeper. And that mm -hmm. increase in productivity, if you can save them eight hours a week, yeah, yeah. Bucks an hour, that's a thousand dollars a month. And then the mm -hmm. last thing, staff replacement. So I just start here because this is where it, all these things being true, you need to learn how to ask questions mm -hmm. and identify where they are. And this is where, when you get really good at this, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be identifying what's there here, because this will guide your cleanup. This will guide your first mm -hmm. step. If you don't yeah. understand the priority list of what's important to them, you'll yeah. fail them and you'll just be an obnoxious little snot that comes, let me fix this for you. And you're like, God, no, I just need the, I need my mortgage statement. Now I need it, a new mortgage. Just help me get my mortgage, whatever. Right? So always start by identifying where they're at with those things and you want to show empathy and ask great questions about what's important to them and then what you're really trying to do is you're trying to paint a picture of there and you're trying to be the trusted guide you have a process and you want to show evidence now i know this isn't practical but if i don't start here what happens we end up coming back to it and so for the here what you're trying to do is identify the problems that they're facing you got to probe and analyze and learn to really understand the problems they face your great challenge is they don't know they don't care they have no idea and the person they trusted up to this point they're not a great communicator was just doing it behind the scenes and they just don't know and they're overwhelmed and they're they don't have time for it and they're stressed out which is all so valid <laughs> mm -hmm. and i would add on top of that is that they procrastinate because they don't value it that's the mm -hmm. greatest challenge in this industry. It's part of why I don't think disruptive marketing on Facebook and Instagram is the prime thing because people mm -hmm. kick the kick, like they just punt on it all the time. So if it's already painful to leave my current accountant, yeah, I don't want to do it. It's expensive and complicated. Like showing yeah. if they search is much better. So anyways, so then you want to cast vision for the other problems that they might face. And so just as you're doing this, make sure that when you're probing and analyzing, you're asking great questions. And don't be loaded, but be really open handed, like, hey, you know, talk to me about X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And so you're identifying where they're at. And you should literally be taking notes almost in this fashion. So tell me what, what do you got going? So how confident are you that you're doing everything possible to make sure that your accounting's done right? Like on a scale of one to ten, Joe, would you put yeah. your bookkeeping and accounting accuracy at a one or do you feel like it's at a ten? Now when it comes to being on top of your monthly close out of your bookkeeping on a scale of one to 10, how prompt is your bookkeeping getting done? Right. That should tell you. And then what that'll do is it'll back into, well, what's the first thing you're going to do. Mm -hmm. And then you want to cast vision for what the there should be. Right. And this is your scope. So where they want to go is the key. We all kind of know that, but it's, there's a weird way to make sure that you're not manipulative with it because they've told you things, but genuinely aligning to what's important to them. Like I've had, we had a tile contractor who, you know, he just wants to give more money to his church. He really doesn't want to grow. He's got commercial relationships. It's him and five guys and they just rake in the money. He doesn't want to grow. He doesn't want to do anything. He doesn't want more staff. He's just like, this is it. He's been doing this for 10 years. That's what he's going to do. And so when Nick, my old partner would try and get him to do stuff, it's like, it's not important <laughs> to him. Like leave him alone. Yeah. If he doesn't want to do it, he doesn't want to do it. So anyways, as you're doing this, that's what you want to do now bookkeeping one of the first things that you're going to want to do is i i believe in a three-step process and what's funny is this process is your cleanup but it's also how you sell right so i think that the first thing you should always do is try and book connect meetings where you can understand where they're at you want to do mm -hmm. an analysis to me i don't think you do paid analysis there's too many other people that it's funny consultants always come in and charge more why don't you charge for that it's like yeah because i'm bad at selling it I haven't sold it yet. So like that'd be step one. I think you got to grow your credibility and your ability to hit the yes. baseball. So you got to be yes. frank with that. I think getting added into the bookkeeping, whether it's zero or QuickBooks online, and then getting your pause on the tax return is the analysis you have to do. And then what you want to do is you want to just slow down and look at what you got and find out how mm -hmm. do I add this organization now if you only focus on bookkeeping, mm -hmm. what you're going to want to do is find out like, okay, how do I bucket this? the cleanup, right? So, you know, if you just started a quarter, if you just started a month, or if you, you know, depending on where they're at, what I know to be true is that a lot of times you have to kind of do one of these with everything up to some, whatever that break point is. Usually you want to get it to the year, right? Mm -hmm. So right now you're 
a lot of people reaching out that need their taxes done. Their books are like a two out of 10 or a four out of 10. They need them cleaned up. They're not intelligible. And what you're usually trying to do is identify, well, how many months back are things broken? But you mm -hmm. also need to assess how's the chart of accounts. So you should mm -hmm. get to a point where your chart of accounts, you know how you want them. And they make mm -hmm. sense for the industries that you're in. They're not overly complicated. I'm a big mm -hmm. believer in shouldering massive amounts of front end energy in order to establish a like a relationship that's easy from then on. There's a yeah. lot of energy in the beginning. And one of the hardest things is, is sustaining the value that you're delivering to these people. Like it, vision leaks, vision and value perceived leaks. There's spikes of it when they want things. There's spikes of it when they come to you. Otherwise, you know, you're doing these little things like, ah, she's just doing my bookkeeping. But okay, go. Got me. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, so but maybe, that what happened. No, no problem. So, part of what I always tell people to lean into is this is what I tell people you're going to do for them. And I'm sure mm -hmm. I know Bookkeeping Launch has a great thing here, but I always start up with number one, we're going to clean up your books. I'm going to establish a perfect chart of accounts and I'm going to ensure that you're set up correctly. Right. You have to decide to what degree. You know, and at what point are you going to have a break point where it's like, okay, moving forward, it's all clean. But what's really mm. difficult is when it's awful and mm. it takes a ton of energy, right? So mm -hmm. most projects, when you position things, depending on how desperate you are, your time to energy to money ratio, you're going to want to do a cleanup project. So almost everybody that I would sell to would have a monthly retainer that you're going to have. And then you have to position a cleanup project, right? And right. usually anywhere between 500 and 3,500 bucks. I see some people, you know, the Ben Browns of this world and others will sit down and talk about how many hours of backup bookkeeping. And I think that that's valid. I think that mm -hmm. whatever, whatever system you want to rely on is what you want to use, yeah. but it's all tied to whether or not they value that. And it's all tied to whether or not you've got that capacity to do it. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes nuking the bookkeeping and resyncing is the best thing you can do. Yeah, that's the question. When do you do a catch up or a clean up, right? Like when do you call it and say we're just gonna we're gonna wipe or clean? Yep. So so yeah, I don't know that I have a ton of practical like here's exactly what you're gonna do, but it's your schedule is probably gonna dictate most of it, right? Your mm -hmm. ability or where you're at is is gonna be probably the biggest thing that accountants struggle with and because it's how you're hardwired is you really kind of have to fire ready aim. As much as everybody tells you, get ready, be prepared, have a plan, do all this stuff. It's like, stop it. Go find some people that have a mess and fix it for them. And then yeah. find out how yeah. to respond. And then keep swinging at bigger and bigger pricing until you get it figured out, which sounds Let's ridiculous. It. That's that's it. Um, yeah. What, what questions do you have or where can I be more specific? That's great. I love what you shared. It's so valuable to me. I just, before I ask the question, I, I want to let you know, I, I listened to one of your videos talking about, you know, things to chat about when you first get the chance to talk with somebody. And yeah. I was <laughs> bought like two pages of notes. I was like, that's a great question. Yeah, that's really great. You know, all the open-ended stuff, right? So I really yeah. appreciate that. What you're sharing ties all into what I've been thinking about. I guess one of the things, cause, cause yeah, you correct me if I'm wrong. You, you mentioned that you're going to you know, look at someone's books in order to craft the proposal and move forward, you would do like a free sort of assessment. Now, would that be just by, you know, asking some questions over the phone, like, tell me your number of transactions, two busy no. months, two, or would that be you going in and looking for free? I think you need to take the bull by the horn, bull by the horns on all of this stuff. Again, they don't know what they're doing. They have no clue. Get added to the, so be added to the okay. yeah. thing and get your pause on the tax return. Even if you're only doing books, get the tax return. Um, yeah, that that was my approach originally was, you know, I have my list of everything I'd like. I, everything that I thought I would need in order to be the most helpful in my proposal, the most on point with what, what needs to be done and how to price it fairly as someone who's newer. Yep. And so my my idea was to, you know, go in and look free of charge get added, like you say, look in QuickBooks and, 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 and get some of that other documentation, to understand, figure out, ask those questions of like, you know, when, how, how does this look now or where are you at with this? And then be able to kind of figure out that. And I think I got intimidated and confused when I started hearing things about, you know, to own, in order to craft a proposal, you need to charge 500 or 350, $500 for a diagnostic review. And then you're going to give your client this report and then 
they can take it or leave it and go with you and and then you'll knock off a discount on your services if you know what I mean? like there's all these different strategies for bringing someone in and that just didn't sit right with me so yeah i really appreciate how you kind of flush that out and you're validating what i i had thought i was going to be doing so yeah, that's good i i think the great struggle is that's good advice when you get busy lean into that because you will be worth it the hardest thing to know is that your competency to do this stuff is your ability to go in and identify what the problem is is going to be valuable i think those those fees have a place that being said this is what happens i'm just this makes me i get passionate about this this is one of these areas <laughs> So Corvy, for example, I have beef with Corvy, not because their software is $1,000 a month for tax planning, but because they teach people to sell a one-time tax plan as a percentage of the tax savings they identify. I think it's the dumbest mm -hmm. thing you could possibly do because what I think you should be doing is establishing a, a long-term excellent relationship with a business mm -hmm. that's going to as a vital partner till they croak. Okay. Yeah. That's what you want. Yeah. And you want a month to month thing. So one of the things that people always forget is like you get a $500 a month. And this is one of the challenges in marketing. If you have a $500 a month client, that's six grand a year. Let's just stay. I think the average they stay is seven years. That's a $36,000 client. Yeah. So look at what people do to get stupid weed control customers. Look at the PPC that they're willing to pay. Look, like, what would you, how much money would you give to have a $36,000 yeah. client? People are, yeah. The, the, like, the profit margins are so high, as long as you're not foolish about it. And then if you get mm -hmm. these $1,200 a month clients, like, they're even bigger. So mm -hmm. the great challenge that you have is like, okay, great. You protect your time and you get a $500 consult consultation fee, but like, the thing and, and there's a place to when you have the authority and the leadership and when you learn to swing the bat like that it does work you're gonna it it does what i find though is that most accountants don't because they know this is the nut that they want like right that's what they're trying to get they're not trying to yeah. get the nonsense 500 and it, yeah and it feels inauthentic to where i'm at who i am i i i just want to just talk to real people i want to help real people i'm not joshing you on that like i really want to you know i want my work to be meaningful i want to take the load off somebody and uh, and i want to do it in a way that doesn't feel like i'm wearing a mask or i'm out of scope but i am this is what i can do this is where uh you know what i mean like so yeah. and i want yeah and i definitely think like for me i was asking myself like how would that make me feel if i was a stressed out business owner or is already intimidated talking to somebody who appears to maybe know more than me <laughs> and that's why i'm talking to them so making mm -hmm. it as approachable and like, oh my gosh, they're just gonna make this easy. They're gonna look at it, tell me in words I can understand and not stress me out. And then things are gonna get better. And that's the way I yeah. see like the onboarding process. That's the vibe, you know, yeah. that I want to do. Yeah. And some of the hiccups you're gonna find though is that these there's so like the reason why I recommend you get the tax plan is you're gonna find out what they can afford. Another right. great question, you gotta find out really fast. How much did you make last year? That's gotta be, and if they made less than 60, bye. Like, it's gotta be like that. Hey, look, I got, in fact, this is not a gimmick. Go find competitors you can hand off the cheap customers to. Mm. Hey, I know Joe's accounting down the road does amazing and expensive bookkeeping. Mm. I, it's less about how much they make and more about like, are these people that are gonna, cause some of your folks that don't make a lot, they'll grow into excellent customers. You gotta right. have some conversations eventually about their pricing, but the quicker you can, so, because what they're doing with the $500 fee, it's, yeah, your time, you're playing defense a little bit. You're making sure that your calendar yeah. doesn't get nonsense. Well, you should just, the joke is have some cojones, look them in the face, find out how much they make and tell them yeah. buy if they're too small, right? And then, yeah. or if they're like, you just got to do it quick. So that's another little protected thing. But I don't know, what other questions or insight, what are the things you're wondering about? Oh, so much. You know, it's funny because I was so into it before the holidays. And then I took a break and I was like, I'm just going back into it. And I'm like, man, because I had a whole document of questions, right? I needed to like, I wanted to chat about just in general. But I think standing out right now, the, the clearest question to me is that I, I would love to hear your, your point on would, 
it would be i don't know how do i how do i explain this what are hmm. what would you say to someone like me who how do, how do i say this knowing my situation or you know i'm coming at this new and my scope is just going to be pretty you know it's going to be pretty modest bookkeeping oh that's what i wanted to ask you accounts payable accounts receivable payroll those other sort of things i've been talking to people in my industry in the industry who they said like the one person uh said yeah every single client wants help with these things that i've talked to and she's well established now so for me as a new person can you give any thoughts on what you would recommend when these kinds of requests when these needs are present with a, a new client knowing i'm newer to this does that make sense yeah yeah so the the your end goal is always to make sure that it's worth it for both of you that you're earning right. a great living that they're getting a great service they're excited right. about you solving their problem and you're excited about being their client the, mm -hmm. you're going to want to have help around you quickly so that you can lean into that that often means you find other freelancers it could be that you offshore like i've got a couple of gals that do stuff over in india that are awesome to yeah. do some cleanup work so that you can do the highest caliber thing you possibly can that's my goal as well yeah what, what was the question one more time no it's okay the question is basically because okay just to put it out there um, i most enjoy talking to people i'm most i'm most passionate about the idea of marketing and sales and so my long-term goal would ideally be to scale up and be able to do those things that are of most high value for what I'd like to do and then build a really great team. Totally overwhelming at this point, but that's the goal. Oh. And so I guess in that context, I know that when you start out, it's just one person. And if I have clients that are telling me, can you do, can you help me pay my bills? Can you deal with my payroll? Um, can you do invoice? How do you, how much will you do with my invoices? What would you recommend to someone like me knowing I need to build uh, and just just handling those extra needs. Is there any advice you could give on that? Yeah, I I think that there's a there's it was perfect. So one of the things you'll find out is that if you can't build a system around it and make a document that teaches somebody else to do it, it gets very hard to replicate. Right. On I the other that. side is you can make nine hundred thousand bucks a year if you have some great clients that that's super valuable to them, right? So there is this juxtaposed like. You kind of have to balance it. There's there's different worlds. What well, you know, the more scalable you become, so that you can just add heads into things. Well, that's great. You can get huge. However, usually your margins suffer, your quality suffers, and mm -hmm. it it's hard. And then you're always up against this AI. So what's weird is I've yeah. seen customers where if you can figure out, it, you have to develop what it's not and have a mature, difficult conversation immediately that they see that describe precisely the little bit that you could help them with right with apar right. sometimes that's as simple as why don't you email them that's it sometimes yeah. it's like we had a guy that came to us um he was a latino contractor poor guy got hosed by all these generals that would just kind of like forget him right mm -hmm. we picked up the phone we got him paid so fast it was stupid because like a yeah. mature person picked up the phone and called them instead of like these like right little emails from somebody that barely spoke english it was night and day well that only took that was a cleanup project so i i guess what i find is that yeah you got to be really careful on your scope but you're also trying to find what's most valuable yeah. so it, like so my advice to it is you know be really careful to know that the frequency the demanding and the tone of their of them like do they just live in the urgent everything's important everything's urgent category mm. you're gonna want to get clear of them and price them away right if they're not a good values match if they're jerks if they're demanding if they're no sense of loyalty like you do need to be on the lookout as a small business owner for a yeah. bunch of that stuff the flags uh, the feelings <laughs> and then can you create a really yes a really simple scope so that if an employee or if an offshore or somebody else were to come in if you can systematize around it it's good it is really hard i think what i've learned is one of the business models is that like you know every five to ten clients you add a new head and they're in mm. charge of those clients and if you get to know 10 clients right then then doing some of those little things can be valuable but you got a price for it mm. and you don't take your time to understand where they're at understand what it looks like what their alternatives are so that they really understand this value point right because mm, some of yeah. this is this is what's valuable to them well what's the alternative cost 
The alternative right. cost is you hire somebody. So if you hire somebody part-time to do that or even full-time, mm -hmm. how much is that? Now, can yeah. you do a version of it first? So it's really funny. So I think in the beginning, break eggs, sell stuff, get going. There is a point where I say that, but you also have to be very careful about getting out of scope because they right. will get standing. But the other thing that's true, I don't know. I I tend to be more patient, more like, yeah, customers are hard. I mean, I used to serve tables at a Perkins restaurant. I used to work at a Best Buy where like people were <laughs> used to like, yeah, clients are difficult. And as long as you don't take it personally, I'm generally, but some of them will make a nightmare for you. So you got to find out what is it that makes them a nightmare. And it's that everything's urgent. Everything's in tyranny mode. Like if they're, mm. if they're you know, what usually causes that they can't mm. hire, they get in this downward spiral. They can't find people. Well, why? It's not that you can't find people. It's that you keep hiring people and your, your company sucks. Your service sucks. Nobody right. likes you. The culture sucks. Like, so then you got to be careful of like, well, they're always going to be like, this. so yeah. I don't know. If you find out who are the right fits values wise, who are the right industry types, if you can, you know, as you get into other industries, if you're going to do those, they're yeah. very difficult to provide. AP and AR works for like one to two industries, like construction or remodeler. AP to mm. AR is freaking different than like a, a CNC shop, right? And mm. so you got to be careful on like, you might find one that it works for. Just basically listen to that. And figure figure out what they're saying, what they're not saying, what they are saying, and then figure out if I want to do that or not. not. Stupid. Just make sure you set good expectations with them. You tell them exactly what those expectations are going to be. You price it very clearly up front. Tell them what mm -hmm. it's not and what it is. And so you're nodding your head. You know, part of it is is when you do that stuff, don't stick them in contracts. I don't think. Like just hmm. simple. Money. Like, hey, let's try this. If this works, let's do it for three months. If not, then buy. Like, I don't want. You never want somebody paying you because they have to you want them they want I, in my opinion i don't like right. business the other way but yeah you know, I'm never, i never have a gotcha and anything so yeah yeah that's that's a great yeah i, I want to like include things in my in my uh, my my contract about you know quality assurance you know communicating the quality assurance there and saying like you can get out absolutely at this point or like this is what we're going to give you this is what we're going to uh and so that's that's yeah that's great to have it no gotchas in there for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, I think you can do it. Price it right. Be careful. Careful of your sectors. Probably focus on one. Wait mm -hmm. till you find it. And what, one of the things you realize is that these financial planners and retirement planners, you know, what they do is give me every document of anything you've ever done. Give me your taxes, your bookkeeping, your, your investment accounts and everything. And then let's look at your insurance. And then what they do is they come out with this way to add value usually with products or services that they make money on, but sometimes it's just a planning mm -hmm. thing. And if you think of yourself as almost like that, that as you're asking great questions, and it progressively, like you're, you got to be careful when you ask some of these questions, they come to you for something simple and you start talking right. about stuff that they don't know that is valuable to them yet. Like, yeah. by the way, like, oh, you have no money. <laughs> like you make lots of money. You have none. That's an important, that's probably more important than AP. But <laughs> if you start bringing those things up before they see it as a problem, that's why I think it's the long-term relationship of frequency yes. of meetings. And, and that's the other thing is you can do this stuff as long as they know how often it's getting done, exactly what it is. Yeah. Anyways, I'm, I beat that dead horse. <laughs> no, it's thought? so good. Don't, yeah. Just meet them right where they're at. Right. I, I think yeah. also one, if, if I can ask uh, one more question. Could I, do you mind, Rob? What would you find is the biggest, I, I think it was, was it something you posted or maybe it was someone else, but the three, if someone's kind of backing out and, and so say we've chatted and they're like, okay, I got to think about it. Let me get back to you. What in your experience have you found would be the most valuable things that I, bases I could cover or think, well, you sort of did cover it. You, you, you know, the questions to ask and hit the needs. You have that, that beautiful chart of like the things that are probably going to be most important and to make sure you hit on those. Um, so maybe I don't have a question actually. Some of, yeah. So knowing how you bring somebody to decision. So first off, you don't send out proposals. I found out one of my clients who I like a lot. Who After you work. chat with them? After you chat with like them? You, you no, no, no. You book a meeting to go over the proposal with them and bring them to a decision. Like the sale is the outcome of you naturally getting there, right? 
And so right. any proposal you send them first off is nonsense because absent mm -hmm. a value interpreter, especially in accounting land, they don't freaking have a clue. Right. It's so intimidating. Nothing. It's so dumb. I used to like, and I, I'm telling you, my dad used to sell heavy machinery. Like, so this client was sending off, oh, here's your proposal. Let me know. Now I've got like a pricing page and you go there. I'm a little bit more like that. Well, that's because I'm swimming in clients, raising right. my prices and getting going. It's, it depends on where you're at. Right. Um, but what I usually recommend is that you're going to bring them. You have to bring the context. So if they're saying, oh, let me think about it, then what I would do is just be like, hey, man, I just want you to know there, there's a couple urgent things. So when you do your S Corp stuff, making sure that you're cleaned up. And this is where if you ask holistic questions, particularly about how confident are they they're doing everything possible to reduce taxes, go find a CPA you can partner with that wants to do tax planning or even get right. into like some, some of it's just fundamentals. Like, And so if if you do this right, the only thing that happens, they might get busy. And then you just call me like, hey, do you like the idea of me? I always use the word, do you like that? Did you like the idea of us doing Do you this like for... me? Did you even like me? Is it because I was really annoying? But just call and be like, look, hey, I don't want to pressure you or anything, but I got a plan. Do you like the idea of doing this? Or what was it? Like, just be frank with me. What things yeah. are like a miss for you right now? Yeah. Like, just freaking grab the bull by the horns, just stick it in it. its skin. And, but here's the catch though. So you do a connect, you do an analysis, you cre create a proposal. Right. And then I think in that meeting, I used to go into meetings and close. This is how I closed. I had two sheets of paper. Mm -hmm. I had how much I thought they were going to save in taxes if we worked with them, just top mm -hmm. level. It's usually around the S -corp. It's not that complex. And the second thing I would do is what was included in the monthly price on a good, better, best. So I had mm -hmm. this giant. So basically what I would do then is I would start the meeting with, all right, cool. I just got done with your accounting stuff. I'd love to serve you. I think you got a cool business going on, but let me walk you through a little bit about what I found. I and mean, I don't want to take too much of your time, but I don't think you're doing everything. You know, you mentioned this. I bet you're probably like a three out of 10 in terms of your tax reduction planning. I think just doing some S Corp stuff, some retirement plan stuff. You've got kids that are minors. Let's hire them in the business. It's like, Rob, you have like <laughs> yeah, $60,000 that you're paying tax on that you don't have to if they do work for you. The sixty, mm. that's a $10,000 tax planning tip. That's easy, right? Um, yeah. Just make sure they actually do the work. And then your S Corp. So just, you know, I did just a, here's a quick chicken scratch. Look, like you made $100,000 last year. Right now, you know, you're paying about $15,300 in social security taxes. I think I'd add another $2,000 in your income taxes total all in you're paying about twenty six thousand in tax or whatever it is i think if we were to get a little bit more aggressive here's just a scenario and i'm not telling you this is exactly what it is but um we can help you make some more a what a, a different decision around your s corp and if we do some of these i'm pretty sure we'll be able to save you about seven thousand dollars in taxes this year so this figure out it. those value points yeah yep and all this is, is, and this is what, if you look at a Corvy tax plan, it's all this and then future, mm. the future value of it, which is nonsense. But yeah. so you can do that. Just so you know, if we take now, if I take that $7,600, Joe, we can use a solo 401k or a SEP or a simple IRA. Now you got employees, so it gets complex. We can invest this. That'll turn into a million bucks in 25 years easily. That's just off of the savings. But I think we'll save you about 76. The other thing I did is it looks like you're, you, you know, all in. I just want to remind you, you know, you're doing your bookkeeping about 10 hours a week, it sounds like, or 10 hours a month. You paid 2,500 bucks for your last bookkeeping cleanup. You did, you got to get the total cost. So you have to establish this is what it's costing you now, which is right. opportunity cost plus real tangible costs. Then you have to bring up a little bit of where they're going because yeah. those of us that grow a business have to add people. And right. if they don't comprehend that you will enable them to focus and you got to teach them just a little bit. Hey, and then just so you know, I think that you're probably going to want to add some staff here in the next couple of years. Um, me being your accountant and your bookkeeper will help you with some of your payroll stuff and everything. You're probably not going to have to hire admin staff. And yeah. you know, if I were to say, if I saved you eight hours a week at 30 bucks an hour, that's like $900 a month that you won't have to pay right. this day. Plus, you'll never call your admin and be like, what'd you do today? And she's like, I did all your bookkeeping today. Yeah. No, she's getting you paid. Focus her. So 
this ends up being pretty valuable. Just so you know, I don't yeah. I, I can't help you. And then Joe, here's everything that you get. So this is the big sheet. So here's what I'm going to do for, and now you got to create your own of this, whatever it is, right? I'm going to mm -hmm. clean up your book, establish a perfect chart of accounts. I'm going to do an in-depth analysis of your taxes, your financial situation, your account. We'll get into some of the other stuff, but I'm going to figure out where you're at. I'm going to create a comprehensive tax plan for this year. And we're going to talk about the subsequent year. Just help them be proactive on this stuff. Mm -hmm. Like the tax plan. Yeah. Everybody acts like it's so rocket science. No, it's not. Um, yeah. We'll provide excellent. I'm going to do your bookkeeping every month. I'm going to make sure you're mm -hmm. kept up to date. We're going to help you with your payroll. So I don't run the payroll for you, but I'll make sure that it's run right. We're going to make right. sure you have the stuff set up and everything. And I'm going to help you with your, and this is where you can add easy value. I'm going to help you with your paying in your taxes throughout the year through your payroll. So yes. you can just go to the payroll, run the escort payroll and make sure that they're landing the plane on time to their tax estimate. Right. We'll provide monthly and quarterly reports. We'll meet before the end of the year. And this is where true tax planning can be done by a bookkeeper by just having a mature conversation about playing offense right around corner four. Like, mm. big, like for me, I have to make a decision about this money in my bank account. Do I take it on the chin because it's a pass-through entity or do mm. I invest for next year and what does it take to invest for next year? So for this is why I like trades businesses because they need equipment, they need trucks, they need stuff, mm. buildings, right? So now you can just say, hey, yeah. look, you said you're going to hire someone next year. You're going to be buying a truck, right? Well, that, yeah. that might have some depreciation. And then, and then I'm going to work with Philip, the you know tax guy that I recommend. We'll, we'll make sure that we work together to make sure your taxes and everything's done. So we'll do all of that. And for where you're at, um, you're kind of in my middle business, I think. I would need you to be at our 1100 a month for that. And then mm -hmm. the other thing is, is you have an utter disaster that I need to clean up in and I have to do a cleanup charge. So usually we would have been doing bookkeeping throughout the whole year. I'm going to do a $2,500 cleanup. So your first charge is actually going to be 3,500 bucks, um, but right. I'm going to get all this nonsense done. Um, so how does that sound? So now they've right. seen that it goes bigger. They've seen that it goes little. They're in the sweet spot. And I like they might. That. I used to just do this on a sheet of paper. I would have this bulleted out with my own handwriting. I like now, it a lot. I, I'm never afraid of not losing business. I don't think you can ever close. What it is, is if you ask the right questions, if they under, if you positioned your process well, so that they understand how you think, how you work, what it's going to be like, you've shown the proof that you're a mm -hmm. guide done this before that you're going to do this before the natural outcome will be i either want to take care of this or not right and and then if yeah so the whole like well i got to think about it i think you should let them think about it i tell them go talk to your wife this yeah whole, I, I think i need to do that too just kind of mull it over yeah. without anyone looking at me sort of thing yeah uh, yeah and just tell them hey so i'll send that over i want you to know but i do if you're going to do this we got to get your books clean you have a you have a mess mm -hmm. and i have other clients that are coming so let me know but I, I know we'll be able to help you save tons in taxes mm -hmm. we're gonna help your business grow and uh i don't how does that sound joe what things stand but you got to give people some width to like digest the whole thing go yeah, through it need sure. all the details if they do need to know all the details chances are it's probably going to be weird yeah because they're already so, questioning they're already questioning your authority and feeling like you're squ swindling them and so it's kind of like you know, sometimes, you know, if they're like, well, what, what do you mean by that? Or yeah, there's a whole group of business owners that think that this should be 200 bucks a month and you do my bookkeeping because there are those out there. And that's, okay. you know, and that's why if you don't take time to what you're going to do eventually is you're actually going to provide just genuine leadership and assistance to a business to scale. To right. the, the two ultimate things you do is improve profitability and improve scalability. Mm -hmm. Those are the two things that like, even if they don't want to scale, you, then hopefully you're just helping improve their operations. So it takes fewer calories. Like right. every business owner wants those two things. So in the back of your head, you should be trying to find out why well, are they heading there? Like, yeah. And if they're not, then, then it, yeah, we'll do your bookkeeping. So some of the things that I also coach through this and I'll end on this, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but it's, you know, what I've found is you know, all of this is good. I cannot emphasize enough. Everybody kind of head knowledge is this. I don't think people understand or comprehend that I faced like a thousand yes or no situations when I started Nuance. Right. I went from zero to 150 small business clients signed and done 
in less than two years. I hold like crazy. I didn't even use digital in the beginning. Mm. People do not understand the math it takes to fill your sales funnel. So if there was like in all of this, if there's one thing that like I always get done, there are a lot dumber people that have worse processes but know how to go out and confront people with the idea of working with them that will make, Mm -hmm. they get to have a business. Smart people like you that stay put don't get a business. You know, I'll see but you don't get a threat. And I mean that as like these gut check things, because when you do the math and I have this whole little section of my course that I didn't know you had a course. Yeah, I know. I got to advertise it better. Yeah. I just throw it. When people do a website with us. It's, but it basically boils down to this. I, I always said, if you need, and it's different for everybody, you have a goal, right? But I have this mm-hmm. little model where it's like, if you charge mm, conservatively, you're not even that aggressive with it. Mm-hmm. You need about 85 clients to have a million dollar firm, right? Mm-hmm. That's probably about where you need to be. And if you just say, okay, how many meetings do you need to get that in order for you to get there? You're going to need, you know, 283 meetings a year for two years. You need about five to 10. It, it boils down to these fundamental things. You got to mm-hmm. make between 35 and 70 call touches, clicks and watches of your videos, of your video sales letter. Google ads coming in, shaking hands with a business owner, going to the association, cold calling the guy with a truck down the road that you want to do their books for. You have to have between 35 and 70 a week in order to get three to five meetings. And the meeting is the full analysis. Mm -hmm. Oh, I appreciate looking at this. That's so interesting to me. Thank you. People don't understand that you need volume. And so just Just keep doing it. There's three, and there's three things that create the volume. Number one, advertising and i'm a huge believer in it's search first i think locality first now this is where i'm different yeah. than most of these guys because i like selling things i feel to that too buy them i don't like i've screenshotted every facebook and instagram ad i've seen for the last three years and i'll just tell you there's a bunch of bull crap out there that people lie is what they do these mm-hmm. market liars yeah <laughs> but the idea is that they search bookkeeping service near me they hit your website and now you have retargeting that's good this does it you probably got to spend to keep it going 500 to 2500 bucks a month but they're free mm-hmm. you spend that you're getting the leads number two you have got to do the gary viner check if i were you you make a whole series of inbound based videos answering the basics about accounting bookkeeping and tax first mm-hmm. to your locality then to a sector so how to bookkeep like now where would i, I share that yeah so i start with youtube youtube shorts TikTok, and then all the reels i think if i were you right now so instagram people consume stuff differently but if you make it towards a niche or a location like minneapolis or minnesota but you know how to file a tax extension in minnesota how to start an llc in minnesota how to file your business taxes in minnesota how to set up an s-corp in minnesota how to how to submit your payments in minute or your uh, retirement plan Everything you can think of in Minnesota, go to ChatGPT and ask every question you could possibly fathom about Minnesota or your location first. Then, and what if you- I, can I ask you a quick question about that? Yeah. If, if so, if I just make it say make make something on my website and then I link a video, I have maybe a blog post or whatever. Do I need to know anything fancy about SEO, or will it just catch that on my website? Do I need to do any additional homework to make that catch? You know, there are some things you need to do and some things you like the principle in SEO is that you have to create an answer to the query. Like that's the basic. So if somebody's looking for a bookkeeper in Rosemount, Minnesota, a, a CPA tax accountant near me and I'm in Rosemount, it probably is good to have a tax accountant near Rosemount page, probably yeah. a bunch of blog posts about Rosemount and tax planning that mm-hmm. all interlink to your site. Like you need to invest. So there is this whole, and that's why I start here. So you would make these videos, you put them on YouTube, you take them from YouTube, you put them onto your website, you make a simple blog post that poses the questions, mm-hmm. the question in the meta title, the meta description. And it's just a really good answer. Ultimately, any piece of content you make on your website, your Google business or YouTube, it's like somebody has come to a bunch of people who offer cookies. And when they offer you a cookie, you get a cookie from every vendor, you take a bite, Google's watching like, all right, now what do they do? 
or do they spit it out and grab a different yeah. one? If they consume it, the utility is high. So ultimately okay. right now, now if someone asks for a peanut butter chocolate chip cookie, you better be making peanut butter chocolate chip cookies. So you need a for very, sure. so when I okay, say- Okay, that's a great way to put it. Thank you. Localities and niches are incredibly okay. important and a volume. Like I would write, you could literally write blogs about bookkeepers near Rosemount, Minnesota. Hey, if you're in Rosemount, Minnesota and you're looking for a bookkeeping service for your small business, I want to introduce myself. My name is Rob Satram. I do bookkeeping, accounting, and I, I do proactive tax planning with my bookkeeping and I'll work with your tax advisor. Now, just so you know, there's about 15 different bookkeeping services here in Rosemount, Minnesota. In fact, I'm going to link to the other, my competitors down below. Mm -hmm. I'm confident that you'll actually get to know me. Now I have a YouTube video on the front of that. So if mm -hmm. you search bookkeepers, like if you search business accountants, so yes, there's, there's, it's funny. I'll show you a couple of these. We're just, I kind of divested of doing this for lots of, so here's best business accountants and CPAs in Minneapolis. This thing is getting them clients. It's getting them for sure. And so it's the 10 best Minneapolis small business. So we went after the major metropolitan area. They're number yeah. one, we put a video of him watching here. And then we actually link out to their competitors. They're going to find it. Yeah. You can do the same. So the idea here is you can do a listicle, you can do a roundup. You can, I like listicles and roundups, 10 of the coolest. So if you're doing your niche, your industry look niche, create content about that niche. Mm -hmm. So best concrete business logos, concrete contractor business. Hey, here's 10 cool concrete contractor business logos I found. Now, just so you know, I'm an accountant that helps concrete contractors with their tax planning. Their oh. book. Here's 10 really cool brands that I found as I was just doing a little search. You take mm -hmm. that, you make YouTube free value, video the give them, give them value so that they start looking at you as like someone to trust and go to when they're, they need something. And then like, that's yeah. how I've been drawn to all the people that I've been drawn to you. Yeah. You know, I was drawn to you because you offered major value. Right. And now I know, Oh yeah, well, he's an authority that I can trust. So if I need a website, you're the first person I'm thinking about. And so many people have done that with like free mentoring or whatever, like one talk, you know? So that's, I've felt that eff efficacy in that and for sure. It'll work. It'll work. Yeah. I guess the last thing that I just want to bring up to you is you have to professionally call on business owners in yeah, particular yeah. local. If I were you, here's the basic thing. I like the trades and it's not because I'm a dude that grew up in a suburb that's been growing for 30 years and my dad sold construction equipment. I like industry niches that don't think they're smarter than you. Okay. Mm, that's well huge. said. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, do, I like marketers. I like creatives and I like co construction people. Now yeah. me, I also like accountants because you guys suck at marketing. But if you go after those, and then the other thing is, is entropy itself means that they're going to be in every city from sea to shining sea. Things break. Right. You need plumbing. You need electricians. You need them. And there's yeah. and then the third principle is there's not enough of them. So if they persist for three years, they make bank. They're profitable. Right. Even if they're bad, they persist. So mm -hmm. all these people are wondering about niches. It's all about you don't want someone who thinks they're smarter than you. Mm -hmm. I'd also be on the hunt for people that have any employees. Because that means they believe in empowering somebody else to work on their behalf. If they're a DIYer in these areas, mm, good point. they think they're smart enough for that. Um, okay. so if I were you, I would professionally, and just don't write an email longer than this. Literally, every truck you see from now on, take a picture of it. Every literally, single. Rob, literally, I've seen the same plumbing truck. And one, in one of your videos, you, you even use the line of like, hey, man. I live in, I live in Dundas or where I live, wherever uh, I see your truck almost every day, you know, can, can I, I'd love to earn your business. Right. And that's honestly probably what I'm going to say to the certain plumbing company, you just strike up a conversation yeah. be like, looks like we have the same commute every day, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, it's a, it's a great point. Yeah. And I'll end on this. If this doesn't go well for you and you get struggling, I just like to have you come and work for us. Cause I need people <laughs> that understand accounting. I'm, we're adding to this team. We have nine right now. We're blowing up. And oh, really, just so you know, if, <laughs> if you struggle at all, I'd be highly interested in in having you. But even that being said, if one of the things we're doing is I'm building a collaborative network of accountants, bookkeepers to link to each other mm -hmm. for SEO. So the idea is we interview each other. We be we take an open-handed approach, 
to I'm fine collaborating with you because we're in different states and there's hundreds of thousands of accounting firms, right? And right. so, and if small businesses don't collaborate right now and invest in this stuff, watch mm -hmm. what the big dogs do. The big dogs For are real? people and the profit margins are high enough in this. And the big thing is, is offshoring. You know, they, they're learning how to sell this stuff. They're still not good at it because they're big and they're addicted to government money. Like these big firms, like they have these, I work with the railroad industry and we help you with this very specific tax credit and we charge stupid amounts of money. Like they're so mm -hmm. addicted to that money that they can't really get into the processes for small business. But mm. um, I just, the idea here, you got to get after it in terms of your sales yeah. until you're having about five or six a week. Mm -hmm. You're not there yet. And then what happens is momentum will build. There's a whole other thing where it's the second you have credit. So some of the things, any credibility you have with peers right now or people you've worked with, you need a testimonial from them. You need a photo of them. Just be authentic. If it's yeah. either have customer reviews of people that have worked with you or you have a credibility building character reference review. So if you mm -hmm. have some professor, if you have a friend, your mom, mm -hmm. if your mom would actually give you a review. Have her give a smiling review as your mom. I don't I know. I trust my daughter. I trust my daughter. Not everybody's kid. Like that. That's not a thing for everybody. So you want to make sure you get as many Google reviews as you can. There's a gigantic yeah. positive feedback loop. Anybody you can then take and get a photo of them, put it mm -hmm. together, put it on a website. Make sure you've got as much of that as you possibly can. Make an image of that with the quote, mm -hmm. the stars, the logo, and the person. Share that on your Google business. Share that in yeah. Put it on your website, get it crawlable. It's there's this, I didn't even get into like the, the nuts and bolts of like what you actually need to make sure your website will work for you. But it's, you know, make sure that you've got a good looking website with great messaging. It's just simple and optimize it for the locality. Yeah. And if it's enough, people like working with local accountants. And so yeah. you can win nationally. But if you don't do that, you won't win. Like you'll just not get accountant near me. Like you need to nail the accountant near me thing. Um, cause For it will, sure. will get clients. So anyways, appreciate it. What other question, any other thoughts or things pop up? Oh, I've got the value that you have given me, Rob, not just today, but you know, like I am just so grateful that you were willing to share all this and yeah, it's uh, fun for me. Yeah, no, it's all, I, I was just, I, cool. I love talking you and thank you so much hey i'm gonna quick stop this i don't know if you're cool with it would you be